Did you ever wonder what a fire engine crew does during their 24-hour shift? What happens when we're not out on emergency calls? A large part of our day is spent training for both fire and medical emergencies. We also spend a lot of time keeping both our equipment and stations in top condition. Keeping ourselves in top condition also takes time. But one of the most important elements of our workday is our fire inspection program. All the businesses in Bellingham are required to be inspected at regular intervals. Our goal is to prevent fires from occurring rather than simply putting them out. These efforts are paying off as the number of commercial structure fires has been reduced each year. But the unexpected can happen, and a second benefit of the program is the time we spend becoming familiar with the layout of a business before an emergency occurs. Assuming, of course, that we can find a parking spot big enough for both an engine and an ambulance. Today, we'll be showing you how we perform a fire inspection. Our first stop will be 1314 Harris Avenue. This structure served as our Fairhaven Fire Station from 1927 to 2001. It's easy to imagine an old engine rolling out of the station. Many businesses remodel their interiors over time, and we expect to see a few changes. The outside of the building still looks the same as it did in 1927. Let's see what changes have taken place since we left. Hi, Matt. Hey, Brian. It's good seeing you. Thanks for taking the time to help us with our fire inspection today. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's good having you. Yeah. We realize that you want to have as safe an environment as you can for both your employees and the public. Yeah. At the same time, we realize that every single business owner has a lot of different things that compete for their attention. <laughs> that's for sure, yeah. We've got it easy. We, we have one focus in mind, and that's safety. So we're going to go through and look at a few things today, and we may find a few things that help you out. That's great. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. So can you tell me about your business in general? Well, essentially, when we purchased Old Number 2 from the city back in 2002, we pitched the idea of creating a community-oriented performing arts space where mm -hmm. a variety of different artistic disciplines could come and have access to Old Number 2. Okay. And uh, we also included a little cafe so that the public could have access mm -hmm. to kind of a nice segue between the arts, which is a little more of an expansion of modality and sitting down and having a cup of coffee and relaxing. A lot of people could potentially have to get out of the building all at once. We do. We have, a, I think, a maximum occupancy of 100, so we could have okay. 100 people needing to get out of the building. Okay. Let's have a look at your exit doors. Sounds good. Okay. I'm very glad to see you have panic hardware on here. I can't tell you the number of tragedies that could have been averted by these things. When you have a lot of panic people that are trying to get out in a short amount of time, if one person trips and falls, the results can be horrible. So here, if one person just bumps these just a little bit, everybody gets out. We like panic hardware. And you have ample exits for everyone to get out. This is well done. Actually, I used to drive a fire truck right out of these same doors. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. And then the second thing we look for are the exit lights. So each entrance and exit has to have lighting up above it. Mm -hmm. Most people go out the same way they come in. If for some reason that main exit is blocked, they need to have some alternate way. Mm -hmm. So that's why we require uh, lights. All right. Okay. Next, we're going to have a look at how fires start. Sounds now, good. this looks like a big improvement over the old kitchen when I was based out of here. Yeah, it's a little different from what you guys had. <laughs> Very nice. So let's go behind the counter and look at your electrical systems. Sounds good. One of our big concerns is the improper use of electrical cords. A lot of times you'll have a plug-in over here. Uh, the device will be over here, and instead of having everything properly hardwired in, mm -hmm. they've got this long extension cord. Well, they get overloaded, they melt, they arc, and then fires occur. Sure. Yeah. And everything that I see is just all right into proper outlets. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. The second thing we look for is overall cleanliness. You'd be surprised the number of businesses that have cardboard piled up, loose paper, things like that. Mm -hmm. Just something that's just waiting for a spark to come in and ignite it. Mm -hmm. But again, you're good in through here. It all looks real, real good. Super duper. Thanks. Okay, it's gone. If you had material susceptible to spontaneous combustion, such as oily rags, they would have to be kept in a fireproof container. And if a fire does occur, we want to make sure that your fire extinguishers are all, all up to date. Sure, that makes sense. Keep in mind these extinguishers are only intended for a quick stop of small fires. If it's larger than a trash can, exit the building, leave the firefighting dust. So our two main concerns are early recognition and quick exit. By having working smoke detectors and good exits, you've covered both of those. You're perfect. 
Brian, as long as we've got you here, have you got any other suggestions that you could recommend to keep us safe around this place? Yes, actually I have two. Um, first of all, you might consider putting a lockbox on the outside of your building. By placing a key inside the box, you allow us to gain quick emergency access to your business after hours. Otherwise, we might have to get in the old-fashioned way. Oh. Second, if you ever do another remodel of your business, we'd recommend putting in a fire sprinkler system. Well, Matt, everything will stood to me. If we can get a signature from you on this inspection form, then we'll be all done. Absolutely, Brian. Thanks so much. Is there anything else we can do for you while we're here? Well, you know, we're short a couple people. I don't know if you could help us out. Well, we are public servants. Hey, guys, wait, you forgot something. Oh, yeah. Hey, I forgot. I was starting to feel pretty comfortable with this. Well, I was, too. Well, I don't feel comfortable about this at all.